Here we are at the M3 Rock Fest. Uh, Quiet Riot, Alex Grassi, Rudy Sarzo. Of course, these guys have been kicking it live. I, I, you know, I, I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you guys, I saw your set list. As a longtime Quiet Riot fan, I believe that you guys done Thank justice you. to the music. Alex, how do you feel about M3 and what it represents? Well, this is the 15th year of it. I, don't yep. know, you know, I, yep. I, I didn't realize that till this week, and it's it's really good for the genre because it brings everyone together. It's kind of like a reunion of sorts every year, and every year I notice it gets more dialed in. It's like really come down to a science. I mean, people know there's the meet and greets. It's there's and, it, this, and they're bringing in newer stuff too, like Doro and Aldo Nova this year for the first time. I think it's great. I mean. I think it's probably one of the reasons this genre still keeps going. It's like an anchor date for everyone yeah, every yeah, year, yeah, you yeah. know. M3 and the Monsters of Rock crew is really tied at their bookends, you know. Rudy, how do you feel? You get up on stage and you see, I guess, the fans who followed you since the 80s, right? That's the, that's the audience. How does that make you feel? Uh, well, you know, <laughs> you know, people, they know, you know, they say how much they enjoy our performance and how mm -hmm. much fun we're having up there uh, you know what in this band you just traditionally choir riot the consciousness of choir riot is to because we started in clubs yeah. in 70s with uh, Randy Rhodes in yeah. the band and then he left to join Ozzy and so on so traditionally no matter how many people are in the audience we as a band we have fun and I found the combination with Alex, Jizzy, and Johnny to be mm -hmm. a true representation of the spirit of Quiet Riot. Yeah. You know, uh, every time I've been in the band, it's been either the Randy Rose version, and the lineup remained the same until the band broke up when yep. Randy left. And then I, when I returned, it was the Metal Health version of the band with, uh, with Kevin, of course, and then Frankie Benali and Carlos. And then in the 90s, we reunited, and it was again the same lineup, no changes. And now we have a lineup that has actually been picked by those who are no longer with us. Alex was picked by Kevin and groomed by Kevin on everything Quiet Riot, the consciousness, yeah. the belief system of what it means to be in Quiet Riot, which dates back to the 70s. And then you have Jizzy that was picked by by Frankie, he brought it. He brought Jizzy to to Frankie's attention that he was available. Mm -hmm. And then what happened is that Kevin was a fan of Love Hate Jizzy. Yeah, so yeah, that's and, cool. and, and we Perfect actually choice. we toured together with yeah. Rat. And Jizzy was in Rat and Quiet Riot. We did a tour. Yeah. And Kevin and Jizzy were always close and buddies. They both lived in Vegas. Yeah. So and Kevin didn't like everybody. He no, <laughs> but he lo he really really liked and respected Jizzy. So yeah. that fell into place nicely. And then. Uh, well, again, Kevin, one time when we were on the bus, uh, we were in the 90s, you know, the re reunited mental mm -hmm. health version of the band. Kevin shows up in the tour bus and he goes, hey, check this out, guys. And it happened to be the typo negative CD. And we were like, wow, this is really cool. And now we got Johnny, mm -hmm. who was actually, again, brought by the at uh, Amazing. By yeah. Alex's attention. When Frankie got sick, yeah. When Frankie got sick. So there is a very, very close connection with the new members and the old members of the band, you know, and I happen to be the new old guy in the band. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you're, it's great you're back in the band, you know, you've been there since the Randy Rhodes era, right? So it, yeah. it really brings a lot of credibility to the band too. Alex, working with Kevin on Rehab, right? Yes. What, what was, okay, I, I know I've interviewed enough artists to know that Kevin was a handful, right? But he loved Quiet Riot. Yes. And there's one thing. Tell me about that. Well, when I met Kevin, I met him in 2000, late 2003, and we started writing songs for the rehab record before I even joined Quiet Riot. He had a, mm. he, I was doing his solo band, and he, um, he was really, I think, really, really energized when we got together, just because he was all about music. He was all about being creative and 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 making new music, and those songs were kind of what kickstarted the whole rehab thing. And he was, he had a great ear, man. He could, I mean, mixing in the in the studio, the way he got guitar sounds and. He was all about it. He never mailed anything in, even if he knew people weren't going to buy it because people weren't. I mean, in 2006 when it came out, a new Quiet Riot record wasn't exactly going to set the world on fire, and Frankie and Kevin knew that. 
but they still put up the money and the time and wanted to do it right, which was really inspiring to see that. Because a lot of bands of the genre at that point in time were just making these throwaway records to pay the rent. And those guys didn't do that, which I really, it was very inspiring to see that. Rudy, what is the legacy of Kevin Dubrow? Um, I play with three Kevins. I play with Kevin in the uh, Randy Rose version of the band. Mm -hmm. And when I first joined the band, the one of the first things I noticed was that on stage, as a presentation, Kevin will always put the, the spotlight on Randy, as it should have been, yeah. you know. And then you have the Kevin during the Dubrow period, which is between the metal, uh, the Quiet Riot, Randy Rose version, and the Metal Hill version. You've got Dubrow, which is Kevin the songwriter. Mm -hmm. uh, he put that band together, and I actually, I was in Dubrow up for eight, eight months and living with Kevin up until the day that I joined Ozzy. So I got to experience a lot of Kevin, and again, like Alex says, it was all about the music. We never talk, talked about politics or religion or who's going on with who or whatever. It was all about the music. Then you have the the third Kevin, Kevin from the Metal Health Choir Riot period, you know, and everybody knows that version of Kevin. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, anyways, I don't want to get into the whole Kevin conversation, but. Uh, you know, I've spoken to Kelly Rhodes, right? We, mm -hmm. of course, know. Of course, yeah. He goes, Kevin was a handful, but boy, did he have his heart and soul in Quiet Riot. Oh, yeah. absolutely, always, you know? number one, you know? yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and uh, I want to ask you about new music, uh, Alex. Are you thinking of writing new music? Have you been writing new we, music? We, I ha well, we have been, it just, when we started this, when we really came back in 2022, um, we didn't realize how busy we would be. We've got a couple songs done, and we're just trying to figure out when and how to release it. I mean, whether we go with the label, whether we do it ourselves, we don't know yet. But it's it's definitely on 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 the table. Are you thinking of maybe redoing Quiet Ride One and Quiet Ride Two? Maybe a few I, tracks from there. I don't know. Just for oh, all I don't know about that. That's no, that's a whole different. That's a whole different. I'm just thing. saying, maybe you revitalize, a, you know, reimage a song. No, I, I think I think this version of the band needs to be documented doing its own thing Fair because because yeah. this is the first version of the band yeah. I've been in that I think can can do it. I mean, Johnny brings his own thing in, Jizzy brings his own thing in, yeah. they have their own thing. They're not just guys we hired to play the parts, they mm -hmm. have their own vibe, and I think it, it really wouldn't be fair to any of us to do that. I mean, it's a, it could be a cool idea, but I like, I think we should do something totally new and document this lineup yeah. of the band. All right, and, and yeah. is there, are you guys expecting, like, to release this within a year or two years? I have no idea. No. I really don't You're know. I, every time I check my email, we have more. <laughs> I have more airline tickets to buy. We're always going somewhere. I mean, yeah, you know, it's a quality problem. Okay. What, makes it, what makes it really challenging nowadays to release to actually not only put out a, a record with new music, but also actually to, put, to perform any of the songs. Yeah, is the fact that the audience is not doesn't have a reference. Yeah, they haven't been yeah. listening to it on the radio constantly, and now they're prepared to hear that song be performed live, which is the way that we used to do it back in the day. Now it's like, we're going to play a song that you never heard before, and hopefully you don't go to the bathroom while we're doing it. <laughs> yeah, you it's know? tough. It's really yeah. tough to break, especially yeah. with this audience. It's a retro yeah. thing, you know, yeah. so you yeah. have to balance it. You don't want to not evolve at all, but you also want to yeah. give people what they want. It's a fine line, yeah. you know. Plus our set list is full of, of you know, metal hell uh, songs and some condition critical and then one song from uh, from Quiet Riot 3 and we just don't have enough room to start taking out songs There's that a lot people of great might songs. expect yeah. that to, to Again, to it's a quality right. problem to have. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. 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 I want to ask you, Rudy, I'm, I'm going to be interviewing Brad Gillis. Oh, great. And I want to ask you, the I, I just I put a post on Speak of the Devil. It explodes. Mm. That album, that mm. kind of live album, mm. right? I mean, what, what, why do you think people love that album today so much? Why has it been a timeless sort of album that you played on and Brad played on in your eyes? Yeah, you know, once everything, this is before Pro Tools and it was actually live, you know, where you hear at least the band playing. I don't know what happened as far as the vocals go. And uh, because I, I gave notice that I was leaving yes. Ozzy immediately after I recorded that. So I know that's me playing bass on it. <laughs> and I know that Brad and Tommy, you know, and of course Ozzy singing on it. Uh, it's the authenticity, which you really don't hear that much in modern music nowadays. It's, there's no click track, there's no triggers, there's no overdubs, there's no 
AI. <laughs> it's just four guys on stage playing. That's it. Uh, I, look, I talked to Mac. Maybe you could weigh in on your. What do you think about Speak of the Devil when when you put it on today? I mean, I think it's it's, it's knowing the backstory of the whole thing. It's pretty amazing. I mean, it was it was a seven day wonder. I've talked yeah. to Max Norman about it. I've talked to so many people about it. Basically, you know, it was just go 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 yeah. and get it done. Yeah. And it was, there, he was taking pieces. Well, there was from, a race. There was a race right. between Ozzy and Black Sabbath yes. who yes. released the record be one before the other. Yes. Yeah. I mean, think, I think it was because of publishing. There was some sort of uh, publishing that was coming end of term yeah. with the management. Yeah. And Sharon wanted to yeah. release it and, and sort of bank on that too. Again, yeah. I, I could be wrong. I'm just saying that's what yeah, I, I heard rumors about that. Yeah. Because you know, it was not my business to get into their business. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, fair enough. But to me, I just could not believe that Speak of the Devil to this day. And I mean, it was kind of a quasi live album where. But then again, we're we're covering great. I mean, not for Ozzy because he's the original yeah, voice yeah, yeah. of that. But for the rest of us, we were giving our, our interpretation. You did a great job, by the way. Uh, I, know, I know you weren't too happy about the few songs. Maybe you know. I, I think. No, I, I, you know, I'm pretty. Look, I. These are the songs that, are, that we were given to play, and it was my job to do the best job that I could within the time frame that we had to learn those songs. And you know, and Sharon on the way to the uh, to to the stage, she says, "Boys, make sure you you play really nice because there's not going to be any uh, any <laughs> seven day wonder, seven day wonder, yep. nothing." <laughs> okay, so we say, okay, so we had two nights to do, and what you hear is what we played on stage, and it's it's. It's like taking a photo 40 years ago, looking at it, and trying to find something wrong with you in the photo. No, you can't. It's a, it's a, it's a moment in time. You know, I, I think the only way to explain it, I was probably 15, 16 at the time. It's you guys, mm -hmm. and Ozzy, and mm -hmm. Brad, Tommy Aldridge, you brought Black Sabbath to the 80s in a way with a sort of new sort of version of these songs that, but still honoring the old I don't know if Alex is that I can that, see that I can, yeah you brought it to the 80s but for, for again, my generation but, yeah say, but right? then again I'm a huge fan of the Dio version of Sabbath I, I uh, me too I mean when that first record came out Kevin and I we used to like you know I used to, we, I used to ride with him to the place called the Starwood and he would be cranking out Neon Nights <laughs> as he's driving a Corvette you know and <laughs> that's, pretty that's cool. my memories of it you know <laughs> Alex, we'll go back to choir, right? What do you, what else do you have planned? Okay, more shows. More shows, you know, definitely at some point new music. You know, it's going to happen one way, shape, or form. I just don't have an official thing. Everyone always asks me, like, we're, we're, make, we're figuring it out as we go. It's a work in progress, you know? Is, is the band getting bigger now? I've seen in the past few years, yes, I've definitely noticed the, amount, the, the, the audience we're drawing, the amount of shows we're doing, the level of shows, and where we are on the bill at some of these shows, it's definitely, it's that this lineup's growing a lot of momentum, for sure. Mm. You know, I mean, I've been, in the, I've been in this band for 20 years now, this is my 20th year. Crazy. It is, I, time flies. And this is probably the most, it's definitely the most, the tightest version of the band I've been in since Kevin and Frankie went up since playing with those two guys because yeah. they had a connection and it but this is this is a different thing it's 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 got a, a it's, it's, we're all hungry we all want to do it for the right reasons it's not just showing up just playing a state fair for the paycheck we're we care you know and, and and we all really like each other too off stage we get along we're buddies good, good. We're, when we come home and have a weekend off we all we miss you when are you, you know when are you coming out again where are we going we have a group text we all you know talk shit yeah. on it's not like other versions of this band that i've been in where everyone goes their separate ways when you get home and no one talks it's we're buddies we're friends and i think it comes i think it comes through on stage too we're having a so blast too. up there I you know so too uh, Rudy, the legacy of Frankie Benali. Like I've interviewed the guy so many times, and even when he was suffering with his cancer, you know, he was a true soldier. But what is the legacy of Frankie Benali? I happen to be blessed to have played with Frankie for almost 50 years, on and off. Uh, I met him in 1972, and we started playing immediately. So for me, Frankie was my mentor. You know, back when I, because you know. I was playing, I'm Cuban, so I was playing in the Miami Cuban rock and roll circuit, which is more having to do with uh, with uh, Gloria Stefan <laughs> with electric guitar than, than Led Zeppelin, you know. And once I went across to Dade County, which is where Fall Lauderdale is, and now, you know, it was a whole different world musically. It was all very Anglo rock and roll, the, the real deal, as mm. far as true blues bass, 
Anglo British invasion type yeah. of music, you know, and that's what I that's and that was very hard to find in in Miami because everybody was more into Santana, you know, that type of style of uh, rock and roll. So when I started playing with Frankie, he he taught me all of that, and uh, I, I you know I, I I'm, I'm grateful for him for all of that. And then we we kept playing on and off for for decades, and then it, ten years later in when I went in to record to Thunderbird, there he was, uh, as a member of Dubro. And uh, it, it, was, it was great going into the studio with him because he's, he's the drummer that I grew up playing with. So it was very, very easy for me to go into the studio, always. Always, it felt like home playing yeah. with him. Yeah. All right, the legacy of Rudy Sarzo, Alex. <laughs> here we go, here we go, here we go. What is the legacy of Rudy Sarzo? This is a guy White's name, Ozzy, Quiet Riot. I mean, I, I, the list goes on and on and on forever. I mean, you, I see it every night. It's, a, it's an honor to play with the guy, it really is. I mean, it's definitely made me step up my game. And I think a lot of it, it's rubbing off on all of us, for sure, you know. I think that's, it's, I think how you affect people and what you teach people is a lot a big part of your legacy. It's not just what you record and the records you put out, it's how you touch people and then inspire them. Mm -hmm. And when you're gone, that what you, what you leave behind is a lot what people continue on, you know, doing that stuff. And it's good. Yeah, that's you know, good, Rudy. That's yeah. good. Rudy's a positive light. That's what I like yeah. about Rudy. He's well, actually, good. see, I'm, I'm one of the very, very, I mean, the only, actually, I'm the only musician who ever got to play with Randy and both Quiet Riot or Nazi. Yeah. And... You know, I learned everything that I learned about the integrity, musical integrity, dedication, all of that. I, I, I learned from, from Randy that. So sometimes, you know, I have a certain perception about people that I play with, and then I think, not any of these guys, but in the past with all the other musicians, and I go back, and I have to like correct myself, say, you know what? I can't be critical because they never experienced what I experienced or learned what I learned yeah. from Randy, which mm -hmm. is really, I mean, Randy, Randy was a teacher. Yeah. Before he became a rock star. And then, Sonia. You know, yeah. And and I, he taught me how to teach, and and when I actually first heard him play classical music was at Sonia because he would not play it in Choir Riot. You know, he, n he never brought an acoustic guitar to a Choir Riot uh, rehearsal, but at Sonia he would pick up the the, uh, the classical guitar and play it in between lessons. You know. You know, uh, here's the last question. What do you wish you could have said to the late, great Randy Rhodes that you didn't? I don't have any regrets about that. Maybe there was something like, Randy, you've taught me so much, or maybe... Well, he knew that. He knew it? He knew that. You guys were buds. He knew that. I mean, we, you know, there was nothing left to, to, to say. Really. All right. All right. Yeah. Well, you know what? Guys, it's been a pleasure. Yes, it's glad it worked out. It's cool to do Zoom interviews, but it's some, no, it's a little nicer. So, yeah, yeah, it's I never can work the link. I always put <laughs> it up. <laughs> On that note, Choir Riot, uh, show's coming up. Yes. Uh, when's this going to, I can tell you, the next show we have is Tulsa, Oklahoma, May 17th, the Hard Rock. And then we're, and then D, uh, the Dio, Stand Up and Show, what's the Dio thing called? Stand Up and Show. Yeah, Stand Up and Show. Yes, the Dio yes. event. Yes, yes, yes. yes. It's, uh, that's, uh, May 19th in Los Angeles in Warner Park, big outdoor thing, hosted by Eddie Trunk, of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we then we're off. I mean, pretty much every weekend. Oh, we have a big show June 21st at the Honda Center in Los okay, Angeles good, with good. us, Great White, Slaughter, and Vixen. All right. And that's a big place, so buy tickets. The bottom line is, if this video comes out a little later, then oh, yeah. just go to Quiet Ride website. There, all the yeah. dates are there. Guys, give it a give it a proper it. Google. <laughs> Google us. Google us. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Quiet Ride Band. Quiet Ride dot band. Yes. Thank you, Jimmy. Thanks, buddy. Thank you, Johnny, for tolerating us. Pause. Johnny, shut the door. Pause. Pause. Johnny. Dude, dude. Oh, sorry. It's his fault. Yeah. It's all good. I'll, I'll re ask the question. Okay. <laughs> That's it. It's him. <laughs> Well, maybe we'll leave that in. What? Maybe we'll leave that in. Maybe yeah. we'll leave that in.